before we dive into that, there's a story I want to share with you about two people that I've I have the privilege of knowing, uh, Rosa and Alice. Some of you might remember them from a couple of interviews I did uh, and their channel, uh, Rosa and the Intolerant Left. Um, so I did I did an an interview with Rosa and Ellis in October of 2022, and then again in February of 2023. And uh, they're anarchists who really live their ideals. Rosa has been through a lot. She faced abuse and dealt, dealt with serious mental health challenges, but she came through it. Uh, and I've always really respected her. Uh, Ellis is, has a history of radical action and organizing. He ran a business as an electrician where everyone got the pay, same pay and nobody was the boss. And it's super rare, in my opinion, to see somebody live their ideas, ideals so fully. And that left a real impression on me. When I first spoke to them in October, they were dealing with some serious issues with the police. Ellis had been accused of having inappropriate content uh, involving minors on his computer. But even from the start, things didn't add up. The police made basic mistakes, like getting dates wrong on the paperwork and like messing up warrants, errors that should have been caught if this was a legit deal, right? Uh, but as we all know, accusations like that do tend to stick, and even when there's no evidence to back them up. Uh, by the time I spoke with them again in February 2023, it was the situation had taken a toll on them. Uh, Rose and Alice were feeling worn out, isolated, unsupported. They tried to reach to their online community, but didn't get much in return. Uh, that kind of isolation can really affect you. Uh, and, of course, you're facing these serious charges, and it really, makes it really, really hard. And I think it seemed like as they were getting frustrated online, or Rosa in particular was getting frustrated online, they ended up withdrawing more and more. Uh, obviously, in the back of my head, uh, there's always that worry, right, that the accusations are true. And it wouldn't obviously have reflected very well on me if I had, you know, if I for standing by them and being on their side, if that happened. But I've always believed that the police lie. <laughs> they they target people that they don't like for reasons that have nothing to do with the law or, or, or justice or anything other than their own personal vendettas. Um, so I trusted my gut. I trusted my ideals and I stood by Roseanne Ellis and I believed in their innocence. So what really hit me was how much the state uh, like really targeted Rose's mental health. It felt like they were trying to push her to a breaking point hoping that she'd crack or give them some reason to take further action. <clears throat> yeah, and or lock her up in some way. It's it's difficult to watch something like that, uh, you know, and not being able to do anything. But I'm glad to share some good news. Uh, <laughs> the charges... Uh, yeah, so recently Rosa sent me a message saying that the agency in charge of their case decided not to pursue charges. I don't know the letters of the agency in particular, uh, but, yeah, they decided not to pursue actual charges. So it was the claims were coming from the police. And then over the years, they kept saying, oh, it's moving to here and oh, it's moving to there. And ultimately, it's gone. So they felt, obviously, they felt real relief uh, knowing that this was finally over. Uh, Rosa said to me that they've chosen to they're deleting they, they deleted their channel they deleted their uh, a lot of their online presence the website might still be up for now but they are backing off of online activism and uh, online work and they probably won't be making videos anymore and I think they're a little burned out and I get get it you know uh, it's tough when you're dealing with that sort of thing and it's such a relief when it is over that perhaps you can just sleep. I'm glad they get a chance to move forward. Uh, their story is a powerful reminder why we should never take the word of the police at face value. We have to hold on to, like, innocent until proven guilty has to mean something. And, yeah, I understand we believe victims, but if the police don't have a victim and they just have the police saying that a thing is the case, such and such is the case then there's no reason to believe them until they show that it's true. Um, yeah. 
It's something very important, I think.